A clone is never alone. In its short run of just five seasons, Orphan Black proved itself to be a series never short of amazing moments. The clever and intricately written story follows Sarah Manning, betrayed by Tatiana Maslany in her Emmy-winning performance, after she witnesses a woman walk in front of a train. The twist? She looks exactly like her. This is a show that everyone needs to see, and if you haven't seen it, I'd suggest go do so now because we are officially in spoiler territory. I'm Kendall Richardson, and these are my top 10 Orphan Black moments. Number 10, as a lesbian, supporter, this moment has to be one of the most quoted scenes from the entire show. One of the really cool aspects of Orphan Black is when the story moves in a certain direction that calls for the clones to impersonate each other. Case in point, this memorable moment when laid-back scientist and lesbian, Cosima, has to pretend to be uptight, peachy keen and straight, Allison. Allison is running for school board trustee and has to make a speech in front of her potential voters. Things go quite awry and Cosima winds up on stage and ends up almost outing herself, or outing Allison rather, but manages to make a save at the last second. Felix's reaction from the side of stage is absolutely priceless, adding perfectly to the hilariousness of the scene. Side note, Sarah is a much better actress than Cosima, having done a more convincing impression of Allison previously, which just goes to show just how tremendously talented Tatiana Mislani is. Number 9, Paul's Death. Ah, oh, Paul Dearden. As one of the first characters we were introduced to, you could never be quite sure where his loyalties lay. But in this scene, however, that was made abundantly clear. Paul's death was such an unexpected event. Usually something like this would take place close to or at the end of the season, but we were just past the halfway mark of season 3 when things suddenly shifted into high gear. Losing a main character, especially one that's been around since episode 1, can be such a gut punch. Considering his final words to Sarah before he let her escape were, it wasn't Beth I loved. A gut punch this definitely was. But what a way to go out. Saying goodbye to the woman you love before taking a few gunshots to the chest, before setting off a grenade to take the villains with you? Pure badassery. Number eight, I got refund. In another iconic clone swap sequence, Helena of all clones does her darndest to convince Donnie and Allison's drug bosses she is in fact the real Allison Hendricks. Let's just say the only reason she's convincing is because they don't know clones exist. Things seem to go smoothly at first. Pouchy and his thugs get what they want, and Donnie and Allison get the frozen embryos back and are on their way. But then one of Pouchy's lackeys seems to think it's a good idea to threaten Donnie and Allison's children. Big mistake. While we don't get to see the carnage Helena inflicted upon them, it is just enough to see Helena covered in blood holding a machete walk out to a visibly shocked Donnie on the phone with the real Allison. She took the money Pouchy owed them and then some, and all she says to Donnie is, I got refund. This is Helena at her most Helena, ruthless, violent, and fiercely protective. Number seven, Helena gives birth. This moment is the culmination of the entire series. Since the show seems to take place only over the course of a year or so, Helena is pregnant for most of it. So naturally, the finale had to feature the birth of her twins. This scene was pure and utter joy, and just a masterclass in storytelling. In the present, Sarah and Art assist Elena with the delivery of her babies, which is juxtaposed beautifully with flashbacks from the past, when Sarah gave birth to her daughter, Kira, and Siobhan, who was killed two episodes prior, is there with her, helping her through it. There is so much emotion in this moment, it is almost palpable. And to think Tatiana Maslany and her acting double, Catherine Alexander, had to experience it twice from both Sarah and Helena's points of view. Such an incredible way to wrap up the show in its final episode. Speaking of wrapping things up, number six, the final clone scene. This was the moment when we say goodbye to our sisters and goodbye to Orphan Black. Showing off their ability to have four Tatiana Maslany's in a single shot the final moments with the leader clones all together was beautifully done. It was a great way to say that they'd made it through everything, that they did it together, and they were still together. There were many times while watching Orphan Black 
when I didn't think any of them were going to get the happy ending that they deserved. And if you told me that these four women would be sitting together like this here at the end, based on their beginnings, I would have laughed in your face. With Sarah still struggling with the loss of Siobhan, her sestras comforted her and supported her each in their own loving ways, convincing her she could now be happy and they could finally live out their lives. It was such a touching moment to witness, seeing them relaxed, having finally earned their freedom. Number five, Cosima and Delphine reunited. This was it, Clone Club. This was the moment that we'd waited all along for through the incredible season that was number four. Cofeen reunited, and it didn't disappoint. Cosima and young clone Charlotte had escaped Susan Duncan's compound after witnessing the villainous clone Rachel seemingly murder Susan in cold blood. The woods surrounding the compound, however, were thick, dark, and freezing cold. I feared greatly for both their safety, and they were on the brink of succumbing to hypothermia when they were discovered, thankfully, by the other residents of the island, and among them was none other than Cosima's true love, Dr. Delphine Cormier. Cosima had previously learned that Delphine may have survived an attempt on her life by dyad slash neolution, but she didn't know for sure. The pure shock on her face and the love for her on Delphine's face upon their reunion was incredibly moving. Shortly after this, Delphine saved Cosima's life by using her body warmth to ward off the deathly cold. Seeing the two of them together finally after all this time was the perfect way to finish up what I consider to be the show's best season. Number four, Siobhan Sadler and Ferdinand's deaths. In Often Black, as character deaths go, this one definitely hit the hardest. Siobhan Sadler was Sarah and Felix's adoptive mother and the biological daughter of the one the clones were made from, Kendall Malone. S was badass, beautiful, protective, and the rock of all the clones throughout the entire series run. Unfortunately, her heroic actions put her in the crosshairs of Ferdinand, recently betrayed by Rachel and out for Siobhan's blood. Sadly, she saw it coming and left a goodbye note for Sarah and Felix, which Felix read out at her funeral. Just remember, my loves, death is nothing at all. I've only slipped into the next room. You can call me by my old familiar name, put no sorrow in your tone. I promise we will laugh at this difficult parting when we meet again. All my love, S. Siobhan went out as she lived, fighting for her chickens, and in her final act took the vicious Ferdinand with her. Number three, Delphine gets shot. Season three of Orphan Black ended with one hell of a cliffhanger. Delphine's relationship with the clones, and most importantly, Cosima, had been strained all season long, as it appeared her loyalties may have switched to those of Dyad. Thankfully, Delphine loves Cosima way too much to ever hurt her, as we finally learned that she is definitely on the side of the leaders. Whilst right, this decision comes at a great cost. After killing the twisted Dr. Neolin, Delphine knows they'll come for her. So she makes amends with Cosima's new girlfriend, Shay, and then goes to say farewell to Cosima herself. It is such a bittersweet moment seeing the two of them kiss for what could be the last time. Next we see Delphine, she is confronted by an unknown assailant and shot. And then the wait begun for season 4 to see if she had survived. Shock, sadness and anxiety was felt throughout the Clone Club for months and months. Such an awful thing to happen to one of the most beloved characters on the show and so intense. Number 2, learning of Beth's sacrifice. Elizabeth Childs, the clone that started it all. Such an enigma, such a troubled soul. For years we had wondered exactly what were the events that led up to her making the decision to walk in front of that train. And finally, in season four, we got our answer. Beth was leading the charge for the leader clones against Dyad and Neolution, the mantle that Sarah took up after her passing. And it was no surprise to see she'd gotten too close to the fire. After learning the truth about Susan Duncan, Evie Cho and Neolution, Beth found herself at a stalemate. Keep fighting and watch her sisters get killed, or keep them in the dark about the Neolution secrets and take them with her to her grave. Sadly, Beth chose the latter. The moment was so powerful yet completely devastating. Beth maybe didn't have to die, but her sacrifice was not in vain. Honorable mentions. Too many moments and not enough time to cover them all. Here are three that just missed the top 10. Allison and Donnie dance. 
This is probably the most funny and outrageous moment from the entire series. Alison and Donny Hendrix are well underway with their little pill pushing business, which has turned out to be an even bigger success than they could have ever imagined. They have made enough money to cover everything and they still have cash left over. So what do they decide to do with it? Blast gangster rap and twerk in their underwear while hundred dollar bills fly all around them. I kind of want to see the conversation that led up to this so I can find out exactly how this came about. It is just pure fun and ridiculousness. Sadly, the moment ends with their poor daughter walking in on them, visibly shocked at the sight of her parents dancing on the bed like that. There's a story for their 40th wedding anniversary. Clone dance party. In a brief reprieve from the hectic events of the season 2 finale, Orphan Black delivered us its most impressive scene up until that point. In a rare moment, we have Sarah, Allison, Cosima, and Helena all together in Felix's loft, Helena finally being introduced to her two other sestras. Cut to Cosima dropping the needle on one of Felix's vinyl records, which plays a very eclectic dance number. And slowly but surely, Felix and each of the leader clones are up and dancing with each other, letting go and giving in to the groove. Not only are the amazing visual effects on display, but so is Tatiana Maslany's beyond brilliant acting ability. Each clone moves completely different to the next each dance reflecting perfectly their personality. It's such a fun and special moment shared between them and with us, the audience. Donny kills Leaky. This moment was certainly an unexpected one. Donny Hendrix is the purest of cinnamon rolls in this entire show. By this time, the clones had surmised that Alison's husband Donny was her monitor, a person employed by a dyad to watch over the clones individually without their knowledge. Donny, whilst being Alison's monitor, had no knowledge of being one and didn't even know Alison was a clone. After discovering this, he gets into a heated argument with Alison and fears his marriage might be over. So he confronts Dr. Aldous Leakey, the man he holds responsible. This does not end well for Leakey, as in his rage, Donny accidentally slams the gun down on the steering wheel of the car that they're sitting in, firing a single shot into Leakey's head, killing him. This left many of the viewers dumbfounded and shocked. Leaky had been a major antagonist in the show so far, so to see him go out in such a meaningless way was proof of the power the writers had over their audience. And my number one top moment of Orphan Black is... The ending of the scandal of altruism. Season four, as I've said, is the best season of the show, in my opinion. But it is this episode amongst it that is probably considered to be the best episode in the entire series. Not only is this the episode in which we learn of Beth's sacrifice, but it is the episode where the leader clones probably suffer their biggest loss to date. One of the antagonists of this season, Evie Cho, betrays her supposed ally Susan Duncan and destroys any hopes of a truce between them and the leader clones. The original, Kendall Malone, is kidnapped and brought to the middle of nowhere. Evie arrives with Cosima, and what unfolds next is simply tragic but beautifully orchestrated television. Evie has Kendall killed and destroyed, and with her now in possession of Cosima and Delphine's research, all hopes of curing the leader clone disease seem to be lost. On top of that devastating blow, these scenes are juxtaposed with flashbacks of Beth and the end of her story. And then Evie tells Cosima that Delphine was killed and she breaks down immediately. Cosima then calls Sarah and informs her of what happened to Kendall, leaving them, and especially Siobhan, heartbroken. This moment was done incredibly well and was completely devastating to witness. All hope seemed lost for our heroines, but thankfully things did get better and the clones lived happily ever after. My hat's off to the entire cast and crew for putting this moment together, and to Tatiana for bringing me to tears with her genius performances. And there you have it, Clone Club. Those are my top 10 moments from Orphan Black. Feel free to leave a comment below and let me know what you think. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos just like this one. You can also find me on iTunes and SoundCloud as one of the hosts of the Friday Nights at Fred podcast and the Monthly at Winifred podcast. I've been a Kendall Richardson and you've just experienced collectible chaos.